HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk, to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, Hopkinton's 300th anniversary comes to an end. President of Weston Nurseries, Peter Mezit, talks about a longtime holiday tradition, and students show off their talents at the High School Talent Show. But first, the Hopkinton Chamber of Commerce held their annual holiday celebration and this year, they honored the 300th Anniversary Celebration Committee and the Friends of Hopkinton Anniversary Celebrations for all their hard work throughout Hopkinton's year-long 300th birthday celebration. As the Town of Hopkinton, we, the Hopkinton Board of Selectmen, are pleased to express our congratulations to, and in order, Gene Birchman, who is the chair, Craig Stanley, uh, Scott Richardson, Hanan Cohen, Michelle Murdoch, Ann Matina, Megan McSkimming, who's the genius who actually pulled off most of the, um, the fall weekend events, and last, and, but certainly, however, not least, Mr. Eric Sonnet, uh, as they are honored by the Hopkins Chamber of Commerce with the Distinguished Service Award for their service and dedication on the 300th Anniversary Celebration Committee. And this is signed under our hand and seal this 9th day of December 2015. Benjamin Opleco Chair, John Catino Vice Chair, John Mosier, Todd Sestori, and Brian Herr. So please join me in, in asking um, Jean Birchmond to come on up and take these and, and please let's give a round of applause for the 300th Anniversary. I think it's been a spectacular year, really. So many people came together all across the community, different groups and people um, to, to pull off more than 40 events. Um, I feel like the town has been well celebrated this year. Um, and it, it was really, it was an incredible time and it was an honor to be involved in it. It was, it was a pleasure. Could you uh, tell us how many hours per week, per month that you, that you spent working on this? It, it, it must have been just like almost like a full-time job almost, planning all these events out. Uh, there were many weeks where, where it was like that, and I, I have absolutely no, I met, no idea how many hours. I can say that many of my days started at 5.30 in the morning texting with Ann Click, because she was always awake and I was always awake, and we started our days that way, and um, together we really accomplished a lot. So I, I have no idea, but the, the amount of hours were absolutely well worth it. Well, you certainly deserve to be recognized here for all the effort you put in, and we're looking forward to the closing ceremony. And thanks so much for uh, such a great year of events from the 300th Anniversary Committee. Well, and thank you guys for covering everything and really for helping us document this um, so that well into the future people can look back and see everything that, that people were able to do this year. And, uh, you know, again, so many people, uh, including you all, that went into making this year a success. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Fireworks, Tim, unbelievable. I was definitely one of the people that just sat there and the choreographed fireworks with the music and I had the opportunity to go to Boston for the 4th of July this year. And let me tell you, Hopkinton's fireworks for sure were at least three times better than the ones in Boston. So congratulations to all of you. Because after all, it all starts here, right? <laughs> So it is my great honor and privilege to also um, recognize the two wonderful groups here that put so much time, energy, and heart into making this all happen. And we know that these things don't all happen by themselves, even though, quite honestly, um, the two groups that we're recognizing tonight made it look so easy, uh, it was incredible. So um, hats off to all of you. And I would like to uh, likewise make a representative um, dedication to the two uh, heads and representatives of these committees. Um, first to Jean Birchman uh, on behalf of the 300th committee. Jean, if you come up. I, I have individual citations here on behalf of the Massachusetts legislator, legislature for each member of the various committees, but um, I will not read each and every one of them, but I do have them up here. 
um, for later. So I will read this, and it reads, Be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to the entire 300th committee in recognition of your hard work and dedication to commemorating Hopkinton's tercentennial as a member of the 300th anniversary committee. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and a hundred more years <laughs> and continued success in all of your endeavors. And one of the wonderful things that Jean shared with me before the event tonight was the fact that Sterling Hager, who was the oldest resident at the beginning of our tercentennial celebration, continues to be our oldest resident at the end of the tercentennial celebration. a tremendous year of events here in Hopkinton and and you represent a lot of communities but have you ever seen anything like this I have never seen anything like it I, I don't have any other communities that have celebrated 300 years I will say but what has been done here in Hopkinton I think has set the bar for any other communities that are going to be celebrating and uh, you know the energy as I said in the room in in the room for all of the events at the parade at the fireworks was just um, incredible and I think that's thanks to the hard work not only the people that set it up but also just to the energy and the vibrancy of this community as a whole and the people who live here. It has been a great year filled with a lot of fun events in Hopkinton as we celebrated 300 years since Hopkinton officially incorporated as a town. Recently at the newly renovated Hopkinton Center for the Arts the year-long festivities came to a close as the 300th Anniversary Celebration Committee hosted the closing ceremony for Hopkinton's 300th Anniversary Celebration. Hopkinton's 300th Anniversary officially came to a close with a ceremony at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts. Board of Selectmen Chair Ben Palaco thanked Chair of the Friends of the 300th Committee, Ann Click and Chair of the 300th Anniversary Committee, Jean Birchman, with Hopkinton-related gift baskets for all the hard work they put in to organizing the year of celebration. Eric Sonnet of the Parks and Recreation Commission presented Chair of the Claflin Fountain Project, Lenny Holden, with a citation thanking him for his effort. In this case, the certificate says, Town of Hopkinton Certificate of Appreciation presented the Lenny Holden by the citizens of Hopkinton in gratitude for outstanding work on and a lasting contribution to the restoration of the Kaplan Memorial Fountain. Signed by Bob Dubinsky, Chair of the Parks and Rec Commission, and Jeff Guelphy, the Director of the Parks and Rec Commission. Lenny, thank you for your effort. Two aerial shots of the 300th anniversary celebration fireworks that will be hung in town hall were revealed at the closing ceremony. How, how he did it with the use of a drone, but you can see all the people um, and get a sense for how many people in the community came out and of course the, the fireworks themselves are spectacular and we do have one of these that will be going into one of the time capsules so people can enjoy that in 50 years when they open them. A group of quilters unveiled a 300th anniversary quilt that will hang in the Historical Society. Joe Regan and John Foster unveiled the homemade 300th anniversary bench that will house a time capsule to be opened at the 350th anniversary. and Joe Regan have um, worked together to craft a beautiful, unique, one-of-a-kind, handmade bench. It's made from tree milled by Joe Regan and entirely designed and created by John Foster. This bench is absolutely beautiful and I'll show it to you in a minute, but it will house our time capsules. So the boxes will be inserted under the seat and um, when the library is renovated, that's where it will be housed permanently. So we're hoping that this time capsule being hidden in plain sight will be uh, easier for people to remember and, and they'll, they'll know that it's there and it will certainly be a lot easier to open than wherever Mike Whalen is than the last one was. So the time capsules, this is the best part, are, are in, the, in the seat underneath. There's two panels, there are brass plaques on it underneath. And um, 
the boxes are over there. Um, we did put in tamper-proof screws. Um, and then I, I put in a little key in the bottom of the bench and marked it with key. So if they can't find a way to get the screws out, they can drill them out, drill out the key and, and remove it. So that's all the presents. <laughs> Um, I think I just, I want to close by, by saying, um, you know, as we close the chapter on this century and start to look ahead um, to the next with wonder and anticipation, I really want to charge the young people in the room to remember this moment in history and um, to be the ones to get the party started in, in, in the and for our 350th anniversary, open up your letters, uh, learn a little something about your past, um, take care with this town that we all love so much and have worked so hard to uh, preserve and to um, to be to be. I, I'm, I'm losing my words, but to just to, to take care. So I just I want to just speak mostly to the young people in the room to say that. We really did this for you. Um, we all love this town, and we hope that we've made a great home for you here. It will always be your home, and uh, we hope that you'll come back, not only 50 years from now, but certainly 50 years from now, to celebrate again. And maybe I'll be the oldest resident by then. <laughs> <laughs> Without further ado, I think the festivities have come to a conclusion. Please eat the chocolate fountain, and, uh, and thank you all so much for a wonderful year. Coming up next on HCAM News, Courtney will let you know what to expect on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider. We have highlights from the Hopkinton High School Talent Show, and you will get a look inside a longtime tradition at Weston Nurseries. A lot more ahead on HCAM News. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. My name is Louise Coleman. I'm with Greyhound Friends on Saddle Hill Road in Hopkinton. We uh, have an adoption kennel here, and we have greyhounds, but we also have started having hounds and hound crosses and beagles. We're always here, seven days a week, nine to five. Our website is greyhound.org, and our phone number is 508-435-5969. So uh, we're open to the public all the time. Just uh, give it a Welcome back to HCAM News. Weston Nurseries has been in business since 1923 and has developed many traditions that have caught on and become a staple for the business. President of Weston Nurseries, Peter Mezit, recently talked to me about the longtime tradition at Weston Nurseries of holiday wreath making. Despite the warm holiday season, Weston Nurseries continued a longtime tradition this year of making wreaths and mailbox huggies for sale. We've been making wreaths for, I don't know, 50 years here, and uh, our wreaths are pretty special. Um, we go out in the nursery and we take cuttings from plants that you won't find readily available that we grow. Uh, Blue Boulevard Cypress, um, Umbrella Pine, um, our own introduction of boxwood, Cryptomeria, Japanese cedar, etc., etc., etc. So we're making wreaths that are just unlike anything else you'll see anywhere else. I think our customers know that. Um, some of them aren't cheap. Um, a wreath maker can probably do five or six over the course of a day, so an hour and a half, two hours of wreath. And um, we put them sometimes in, um, you know, we'll, we'll custom make them as well. So people will come into the wreath room and say what they want for all the ingredients and we'll custom make them. So it's kind of a unique thing we do. We take our horticultural sales staff, come second or third week of November and that's all they do for three or four weeks is make wreaths. Uh, we make mailbox huggies which are kind of half wreath that goes over your mailbox. We've got a lot of those right now in stock. Um, they'll do the boxwood trees, the kissing balls, but all unique with these nursery grown greens that we grew. Owner Peter Mezit said the warmer weather has actually been good for business. Yeah it's improved it. I think people love to see 
snow and reminds them and gets them psyched about Christmas. But when it comes to retail outdoors like we are, um, it's been really good for us these warm weekends and warm weekdays. People are staying longer. Um, I think, you know, when they stay longer, they tend to spend a little more too. So uh, we've got Santa coming up one more weekend, and it's been some of our biggest December days we've ever had with the amount of uh, customers visiting Santa and, and, and rings at our register. For more information about Weston Nurseries, you can head over to westonnurseries.com. Hopkinton High School students recently hit the stage to show off their talents at the annual Hopkinton High School Talent Show. Here's a look at some of the many great performances. And 
A lot of great musicians at Hopkinton High School this year. The talent show can currently be seen on HKM Ed. To tell you when you can expect everything else coming up on the HKM channels, here is Courtney with our HKM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HKM Insider. On Friday, December 18th at 8 p.m., the Hopkinton Coffee Break hosts share Christmas traditions and memories. They open in a certain order and everything else. So you, and every year it goes whether they, they spin something. And if it's um, one thing, oldest to youngest. And if it's right. the other, it's youngest to oldest. And the last couple of years, it's been oldest to youngest. <laughs> so watching like, you know, six-year-olds pacing around like Wait. ready, ready to lose it. On Monday, December 21st at 5 p.m., it's a basketball doubleheader versus Medway live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, December 23rd at 7 p.m., Barbara Kessler performs songs inspired by her life on the road as a folk singer on Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. On Friday, December 25th at 12.30 p.m., favorite Christmas songs are performed in the St. John's Community Christmas Concert. On Sunday, December 27th at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from December 21st will air. And on HCAM Ed, we bring you even more musical performances with the 7th grade winter concert, 6th grade winter concert, and the Hopkins School winter concert. For program dates and times, visit hcam.tv slash education. Of course, this isn't all that we have here at HCAM, so if you want to know what else we have and when it will air, visit hcam.tv slash news updates, where you can subscribe to our HCAM Insider newsletter. You can also sign up for our daily news updates to learn about what's going on around town. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Lastly, I want to congratulate the 300th Anniversary Celebration Committee, as well as the Friends of the Hopkinton Anniversary Committee, on a terrific year of celebration. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care, and thank you for watching.
Christian.